my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus my greetings to all today we will continue our matthew english series and we are studying on the be attitudes or we call the sermon on the mount and uh, we are at the sixth of the be attitudes and as we all know the be attitudes means bringing inner beauty so today we will focus on matthew chapter 5 and verse number 8 it says blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god and uh, you see this is the most difficult uh, uh, be attitude according to me because it's a little bit difficult to explain what literally this means and many have different uh, ideas based on this many christians have the different perspective of this pure in heart and and seeing god so uh, as we all know the very the very familiar scripture in first samuel chapter 16 verse 7 here it says for the lord seeth not as man seeth for man looketh on the outward appearance but the lord looketh on the heart so this is exactly what god is looks our heart uh, our our nature our character rather than looking at our outward appearance so that's why we in this context we have seen many uh, attitudes like uh, bringing min, uh, inner beauty and here uh, we all know uh, the time of jesus the pharisees were maintained some external purity and uh, they giving much important to external religion rather than no uh, self examining of, of their own hearts the condition of their hearts yet jesus simply said pure in heart so even many pharisees know about this they were lacking something even though they do all rituals and all other thing uh, ceremonial laws and all but some of them still knew that uh, they need some supernatural power to uh, now enter into the kingdom of god that's why the nicodemus came and asked jesus what is the way to inherit the kingdom of god if you read in john chapter 3 verse 1 there he says there was a man of the pharisees named nicodemus a ruler of the jews see he was the pharisees one of the pharisees and he was a ruler of the jews so he knew all the cultures and ceremonial laws and and rituals and all but still he expects something uh, he desires something to do to enter into the kingdom of god you know at the time of uh, uh, jesus uh, they were in much trouble jews were in much trouble uh, one is under rome uh, their tax and their slavery and the other one is uh, because of pharisees and scribes they put a heavy burden upon them and that's a law and uh, they had their uh, church laws which were unable to uh, bear them if you read uh, matthew chapter 23 uh, verse number 1 through 4 if you read there uh, jesus is saying to them they are sitting in in the moses throne and they what they are doing is for the bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on man's shoulders he said but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers so this is what their condition actually jews condition it was a it was a great burden on them they couldn't able to no borne them bear them that's why jesus said come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden i will give you rest he said so this was their burden and they couldn't able to do them and that's why jesus said if they has you to do something you do it but don't follow their examples he said that's why the nicodemus came and asked jesus what is the way to enter into the kingdom of god so here what we read you know so far uh, in the uh, chapter 5 and verse 3 says poor in spirit if you read in context so that uh, that is recognizing our, our spiritual bankruptcy we couldn't able to pay them because of our poor uh, of our qualities our characters and our sins and then we mourn for our own condition 
and what happened then we are automatically become meek and humble and gentle uh, because of that condition and then you are uh, begin to hunger and thirst for righteousness and then god granted mercy to us and that makes us pure in heart that is what the context if you read it clearly speaks in this way so blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god matthew 5:8 so here purity of heart has to do with our motives this is not talking about literal heart but the motives the thoughts that comes out of mouth out of the heart jesus said the abundance of heart mouth speaks so pure in heart is not mean you will not have bad thoughts pure in, uh, purity of heart is not sinlessness of life if you say you don't have sin then we are deceiving ourselves see in john uh, john says apostle john if you say i have no sin then you deceive yourself there is no truth in you so a pure heart has no hypocrisy no guile no hidden agenda or motives internal purity when uh, nathaniel approached jesus he said see the guileless person israel who oh, is the guileless of israel is coming so that's mean it is not actually he was sinless so he was not hypocrisy there is no guile in in his heart that is what jesus was telling sometimes it is possible to appear loving righteous and humble but uh, if our motive is wrong then our behavior is no value in the eyes of god sometimes we do everything good thing to admire people the others others must admire us and we should uh, seem like better than others so that is actually the wrong behavior or is the wrong motive because god knows every intention of our heart in first chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 says the lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts see our lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts so the pure of heart are those whose intentions are pure whose motives are pure that is what here yeah, the pure in heart mean, uh, represents because our heart is the very complicated organ in the body if our heart is corrupt and the whole body will corrupt so when we talk about heart means it is not about the literal heart if you scan your heart you will find the heart pumping and uh, beating 72 times per minute and and about 72 times and and have as four valves and arteries and veins be keep running it, the oxygen it takes oxygen to every part of the body so it's an important organ but here he is not talking about the literal organ so he is talking about our motives our intentions so impurity of heart or motive is the cause of spiritual blindness most of them are uh, they they are who are coming to christ you know they have some motives in their heart usually they'll come for matrimonial they look for bride or look for groom or or for social standing or for uh, clock for business and from some other reasons they became christians or for school admissions or for good school and there are many reasons that motive is wrong if that motive is wrong definitely you will become blind you will not look for the truth you will not search for the truth see that's why we are, our motive should be very pure our creator cares what we do and he cares why we do that's very important what we do he cares and he cares why we do that so brethren i uh, you can check one of our subjects in in youtube there uh, we have a sub- we have spoken a subject but it is in tamil so there it says god looks our heart but in a bracket i put intention or motive and clearly explained about uh, god looks our heart because now we are studying matthew verse by verse today so i am in this context so i cannot go jump and to the others other topic 
so here unless the heart is clear the why the life will not clear so our motive should be very clear why we are being a christian what is the purpose of uh, our following christ and that's very important so now the purification in art is something divine operation is something divine lay work which cannot perform by ourselves you see when jesus was about to born angel said to joseph and uh, in matthew chapter 1 verse 21 and she shall bring forth a son and thou shall call his name jesus for he shall save his people from their sins so who shall save from our sins he shall save so that's why jesus was born to this earth to save us from our sins so it has, this is something as i said it's a divine operation and if you read in isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 here clearly says come now and let us reason together said the lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool see your sins may be scarlet but it will become as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be become as wool so i'll give you an example if you go to you know in our country if you see in some places not all the places if you see in some places in some internal areas street corners and all there will be dumped a garbage there if you see the garbage and suddenly overnight the snow came and covered that we just imagine if the snow comes and covers that garbage the heap of garbage and you can never find the garbage there you will see only the snow but still inside the garbage is there but we cannot see that garbage because the snow has covered that garbage that is what our situation our condition see uh, we are like uh, you know we are still a old person a fallen being but christ uh, now his righteousness has covered us completely so we look righteous before god that is what the justification legally he uh, justified us so in christ god drops all charges against us that's what in romans 5:1 it says therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ you see we are justified by faith and we have peace with god now through our lord jesus christ so now god cannot demand two payments for our debt so one jesus is already paid again god cannot ask the debt to clear you know there was a, a story literally literally happened that story in new zealand there were two mother sheep so uh, one mother sheep when gave a birth to a kid the mother was died in other side the when the mother kid gave a birth the kid was died mother was saved now you see both the side here the mother was died there the kid was died so the shepherd uh, took this kid and brought to that mother to feed but that mother took a smell and she started rejecting that kid because she saw that this kid is not mine then this uh, shepherd did an idea he just uh, took a, a skin of that dead lamb and covered with this uh, li- live lamb and then he took that kid to the that mother sheep and that mother sheep uh, took that aroma and got a sweet smell of her kid and she started uh, feeding and that is how our condition now right now brothers and when we go to god by our own righteousness god smells us and it stinks and he rejects us but when we go through our christ god smells that sweet aroma the sacrifice of his only begotten son and he accepts us and he guides leads provides feeds and everything he does for us because of the jesus christ great sacrifice so that's what the bible says in christ god reconciled us 
to himself. So he reconciled us through Christ. So once we were enemy of God, now we are become friends of God. That is why in Micah chapter 7 verse 19 says, And thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. See, God has cast all her sins into the depths of the sea. Now you don't fish to fish it back. That's the main thing. You have to be very careful. We should put a board on her. No, all the time. No fishing. Again, you should not go back and you know, commit the, the original sins again. So that's the second uh, kind of uh, purification. And the third one is cleansing. The personal cleansing is there. In Christ, God washes our heart and our life. So if you wash your car or bike, next week you, again you to take a car and just go and roam and come back, again dirt will come. Again you have to wash it back. So even our dresses, whatever the shirts, dresses we wear, saris and all, we get dirt. Again, again we have to wash it back. There is no soap has been invented so far. The ones if you wash means you don't need to wash forever. Like that, the nature of life. So justification is made once, but cleansing is every day through the blood of Jesus Christ. Every day, every hour, every minute you have to wash from the blood of Christ. In 1 John 1 9 it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, if we confess our sins, after we receive Christ and after we justified and once saved is not ever saved. So we might go astray. There are chances. That's why every day we must walk in light and we must confess our sins and Christ will cleanse our, all our unrighteousness and he will forgive us because he is faithful. And likewise in Ephesians 5.26 also it says, Ephesians 5.26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Washing of water by the word. Every day by reading the Bible we will be sanctified. So that's how we are personally cleansing every day. So he saved us according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. If you read Titus chapter 3 verse 4 and 5 it says, so he is washing of regeneration, he is giving a new birth to us. Our whole life has all been dead. He has given a new life, new guidance, new direction to our mind. That is what the regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is pure in heart, then that become the peacemakers. If you read Matthew 5, chapter 5 verse 9, no, it says, the pure in art will become peacemakers. And it is pure in art, in verse 10, who are persecuted. If your heart is pure, and you will be persecuted. And verse 11 says, it is pure in art, who are insulted and persecuted, and against whom all kinds of evil is spoken falsely. Because your motive and your heart is pure, the people who are in darkness hates the light. And it is pure in art, verse 13, who are the salt of this earth. If you are pure, you will be the salt of this earth. And it is the pure in art, verse 14, who are the light of the world. The darkness definitely will hurt the light. So that is why we see uh, in David, uh, David says in Psalms, God desires truth in the inward parts. God desires truth in inward parts. So without pure in heart, it is impossible to see God. If your heart or motive is not pure, it is impossible to God see to see God. That's why Jesus said, "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God." Not all will see God, but those who are pure in heart will see God. So here. None has ever seen God and lived. We all know. Seeing God in natural eye, that is carnal idea, nobody will 
say that Jesus has said you no know, blessed are the pure not will see god it is not in literal eyes we all know because god is spirit and we definitely are in fleshly cannot see god and christ in christ we have access to you no know, go boldly to the throne of god I mean spiritually we can come in in with god and uh, of course uh, in the resurrection we will see face to face in heaven that truly is going to happen in the future but right now it is impossible to go- see god literally even in the old testament many have seen god moses isaiah ezekiel and it's all kind, some kind of you know typically they seen god like uh, they seen god in pillars of fire in vision in dreams they seen god but literally no one has ever seen god face to face when moses asked you no know, to see god face to face what did god said you will die if you see me you will die he said they cannot see my see god face to face so he was hidden that uh, rock and when god was passing and we know that god rep- the the archangel representing the god there in in exodus 3 we re- we read so but in god was you no know, just moving he saw him from backward he didn't see god face to face but uh, seeing god in scriptures is there are varieties of ways see and no k n o w no is the same word used in in greek in hebrew sometimes when you go and see the strong's concordance they will give a number for dictionary for uh, c and if you that if you trace that number it will take you to the another number if you go and see that number and there they will put no k n o w so the c and no are used interchangeable in english so here john 118 jesus said no one ever seen god at any time the only begotten son which is in the bosom of the father he had declared him so son convinced us to know god so seeing god is also mean knowing god if sun sets you free you will free so here literally what jesus mean is god is in active in this world we can see his fingerprints we can recognize that he is the one who is doing everything what we read in romans chapter 1 nobody has ever seen god but through his creation we may know god see whenever we i i used to do this whenever i go out and i see the nature when i go to zoo and i see the animals and the birds i see god in them i will be admired of them and i will be amazed and see what is such a beautiful creation they are their activities and their you no know, uh, nature how they live and everything we'll see god in them we know these are created by god but the world and science say it is uh, naturally it is came so we we believe it is god who one was created them all and if you read psalms uh, chapter 19 it says so you can see god's power in, in the firmament and in the sky we see the hand works of god we see the sky the stars the sun moon there is a creator behind this all this creations so we see god through his creation that is what we see we see god but others cannot see god so brother and beer and seeing god is wide range of meaning actually i as i said no i don't want to go very deep in that you might have different opinions about this but this is not going to do any confusion or or any controversy in this according to me we see god in history we see god in circumstances we see god in creation we see god in providence 
we see god most clearly in revelation in the scriptures finally we see god in our brothers and sisters in their character we see them no and the disciples said to jesus show us the father jesus answered you know have i been so long with you and you still don't know if you see me you seen the father he said so when people saw jesus they literally seen god that is that was the nature of christ he displayed god in his in his behavior in his character in his attitude of course now we can't see him because he raised and he, he is in heaven right now but we will enjoy his glory even though in the time of uh, peter's epistle after 15 or 30 years of uh, jesus resurrection he wrote that epistle there he says though you do not see him now you believe in him and are filled with an expressible and glorious joy see though you do not see him now those people in the time of uh, peter no some people didn't see jesus christ but they still believe in him and filled with expressible and glorious joy he says in first peter 1:8 Even Paul's goal in his life, you see, and he considered everything as rubbish. To know Christ and to live for him and to die for him is his desire in his life. In Philipp, if you read Philippians chapter 3 verse 7 onwards. So brethren, pure is like unpolluted, unmixture, unmixture of idolatry, unmixture of adultery. that's what here the pure represents sometimes we say it's a pure ghee it's a pure honey it's a pure milk sometimes we say that that's the word it's used pure without adulteration that's the word here jesus is used so pure in heart is god is in our whole hearted so paul says he did not already made perfect but one thing i do he said i press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of god in christ so this is what our goal pure in heart is the goal of the christian life our goal our aim everything is to become pure in heart if you read in psalms chapter 24 verse number 3 and 4 it says who shall ascend the hill of the lord and who shall stand in his holy place he who has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully so here clearly says he who has clean hands and a pure heart when he says pure heart it is not mean not without sin it does not mean without sin david been a single minded person David was committed sin and of course till he did bed you know that sin was there in his heart in his mind but he was talking about the single minded if you read in James chapter 4 verse 8 there he says draw near to god and he will draw near to you cleanse your hands you sinners and purity and your sinners and purify your hearts you men of double minded see purify your hearts you men of double minded so double minded cannot be the pure not so single minded okay and uh, you see uh, elijah said in the old testament how long you will limping between two opinion he said so limping between two opinion and he said no man can serve two masters so these are the words you know stressed or synonym for pure in heart if you know the pilgrim progress john bunyan wrote that book you know in pilgrim progress they have different characters they have given some names playable and uh, obstinate hope and uh, help 
and mr valli wise man and uh, another name was given there in that character mr facing both ways there is a character called mr facing both ways so facing both ways no uh, lukewarm cannot be the pure in heart that is what we have to be careful in psalms chapter 86 verse 11 86 11 says teach me your way o lord that i may walk in your truth unite my heart to fear your name so that uniting again single minded pure heart clean heart it's all about you know whole heartedly facing only on god again if you read psalm 73:1 there it says truly god is good to israel even to such as are of a clean heart see truly god is good to israel even to such as are of a good clean heart here if you read in other translations sincere heart and pure heart so your heart means again it talks about our intention our motives so my dear brothers and sisters when jesus said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god which means those who are there those who, whose motives are clean and pure whose intentions are clean and pure will definitely see god in everything they do and ultimately in the resurrection we'll see god face to face that is what jesus was telling here so may god bless you all brethren thank you for listening and if you have any questions you can contact me i have given my whatsapp number or my email id i will answer all your questions may god bless you all amen thank you